Hey, welcome back. We're in the book of Exodus. We're in chapter 8 today, verses 13 to 15. So just a little recap, you know, we did the serpents to rods, then we got into the first plague, the Nile River turned to blood. Second plague, frogs. Uh, Pharaoh asked yesterday, asked Moses to take away the frogs, and so Moses prays and God takes away the frogs. Now we see what happens next, starting at verse 13. The Lord did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out of the houses, the courts, and the fields. So they piled them in heaps, and the land became foul. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart and did not listen to them as the Lord had said. So Pharaoh reneges on the deal. Remember his deal? Uh, Entreat the Lord to del deliver me from the frogs, take the frogs away, and I'll let your people go and sacrifice in the wilderness. But that's not happening. That's not going to be allowed to happen. Pharaoh uh, changes course here after, after he's out of the trouble spot. And we'll see how well that works out for him. It's kind of interesting here, although the frogs stop multiplying, uh, the Egyptians are kind of left to shovel them up and, 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 and stack them up in, in piles. Can you imagine stacking up, uh, spending the days? Can you imagine the smell? Can you imagine the, everything about that? Uh, piles and piles and piles of dead frogs everywhere. But that's kind of what we're left to see here. Now remember, the frog was a sacred animal to the Egyptians because they worshiped the frog goddess Hecht. But now they're stacking up all these dead, filthy, stinking frogs in heaps. So might not be as much frog worship after this. But anyway, Pharaoh does not honor the arrangement that he has made. I mean, it was his, uh, his initiative there on that. Uh, he doesn't honor it. And so we're kind of back to this standoff situation again. It's kind of hard to know what Pharaoh is thinking at this point. I mean, his world's being shaken. Uh, he is confronted with a god who is stronger than any Egyptian god. And, you know, one by one, the Egyptian fake gods are going down in flames one by one. And so here we have this one. And it's the demonstrated power of Yahweh. Now, it would be interesting. We don't have anything on this. It would be interesting to see what the Hebrews are thinking right about now. Because this frogs everywhere thing is affecting the Hebrews, too. And remember, you know, some of the Hebrews have been absolutely faithful. They've been longing for more. And their eyes are opening up. They're kind of beginning to say, hey, something's definitely going on here. And they're kind of thinking our future might be a lot different than we thought it was going to be just a few weeks ago. So that would be interesting to see what's really going on in their mind. And then there are, are so many Hebrews who've been raised for generations and generations in Egypt. Uh, they have become so demoralized, and now they're also looking at the same thing. Hey, things might change. And, you know, one of the things we're the worst at or that we, we dislike the most, it seems like, for a lot of us, it's change. We don't like change. We don't want to change. We'll do almost anything to resist having to change. And so it'd be interesting to look into the mind of some of these Hebrews. But God, remember, they're not really ready to be delivered, but God is going to bring them along, if they're willing, he's going to bring them along to a spot where they're more ready to be delivered. And I think that's part of what's going on. The Ten Plagues is not only uh, it's going to be a time for humiliating the fake gods of Egypt, but it's also a time when the faith of God's people can begin to, begin to build up. Uh, be, from from the t the low, demoralized, terrible place that it has been. Hey, there is a God in heaven. Our God hasn't forgotten us. That leads in some pretty good places. So God's preparing his people to be delivered, not just about Pharaoh. And you know, deliverance, again, was is going to bring pretty remarkable responsibilities. I mean, when all you're doing is working all day long, you're demoralized, and you're living under these super harsh conditions, Maybe you feel there's not as much expected of you. There's not as much humanity expected of you. But God made us in his image, and God wants his people to come up higher. He always wants you and I to come up higher. So, again, looking into the minds of, of the Hebrews, we, we can't do that. But, yeah, this is an interesting time for everyone, everyone along the Nile, isn't it? So just keep this in mind. Deliverance is a frightening prospect, not only to the oppressor, but to the oppressed because there are more is going to be required of me. So let's go up higher as God helps us as we march to Zion. All right, let's see what happens tomorrow morning.